Okay, let's see if this works. Oopsie. Oh, I hope it didn't kick it off. Let's see. Maybe? Okay, I think I can see myself. Okay, hi guys. Um, all right, let's get it up a little more. There we go, there we go. I'm new to this, you know, style, so. Anyway, um, I wanted to get on here. I'm finally back face to face. So um, I am doing my, normally I have a, you guys know that normally on Mondays I do a Disney video, but I can't do a Disney video this time. I'm doing just a st any stamp that I have because I just um, didn't have it. Then, hi, Marsha. Yeah, these are my Italy ears from uh they're from epcot and you see the mini on her little vespa it's so cute and i got these um during my um i had them in my recovery every time i took a picture of my recovery i had different new ears on so that's kind of fun these ones are real ones but i also get some on ebay for some of the cast offs so what happens is they're like a little crooked but they sell them on ebay in china and i think that it's because that's where they're made and i think that they're like when you look up how many yen it is it's only like a dollar so that means that the cast offs that they have they're selling in an outlet and then they're selling them to americans for like 10 bucks or something and so yeah anyway so these are my cute new little italian ears and i like the little uh images but anyway so Recovery is going good. I'm here today to teach you guys. And um, I have this cute new set. We've got our new catalog coming and um, or a new catalog came out. So that means that there's lots of good stuff for um, there's lots of good stuff for us to like shop. And oh, there's so much cute stuff in the new catalog. It's not even funny. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited about our new catalog. Uh, I sent out catalogs. Everyone should get a catalog. Any of my current customers are going to get a catalog. I normally don't mail them all, but I can, I can drive now, which is the big exciting thing. But, um, the getting in and out of a car to deliver them some, even though they live close by, I'd be delivering like 15 of them in and out of the car. And I was like, Oh, that's too much. And so, um, so yeah, I was like, that's too much. I don't think I can handle that. Um, oh no. Um, I'm very cautious with going broke, Marsha. I'm very cautious at the things that I buy. I like have a budget. Um, oh, you mean going broke on the cute stuff in the catalog? Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I schedule out what I'm going to use and I need to love it. I'm a frugal stamper in that regard. If I don't love it, I don't buy it. The Halloween stuff is my favorite. I like Christmas things too. But, and I like Christmas. Christmas is a great holiday, don't get me wrong, but for some reason, I don't like making a ton of Christmas cards. I mean, I'll probably have a class on it. I'm just trying to decide which stamp set I'll use and, you know, which one, you know, I'm just trying to decide. But, um, but yeah, um, super fun. So today we're doing a birthday card based on some, a, a, um, a, it's a birthday card with a Christmas stamp. To show you some versatility so yeah so anyway so here is my cute ears and i'm so glad to say hi to you guys today so all right okay let me cover up our thing and move the camera Maybe it's just a little. Oh, there we go. I just had to push it a little bit more. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, now it's twisted to a good angle. All right. I'm new to, remember, I'm still new at doing this one flip over. I thought I'd try that little memo to try and do it a little differently. 
There we go. Got to get it a little closer to me. I have this long arm that I bought. Okay, perfect. Come on. There we go. Sorry, I keep moving. Just wanting to make sure I can show you guys what we're doing. Um, such an odd angle. I don't know why it's twisting to that. There we go. It was just a little funny. Anyway. All right, we're good enough. Okay, so this is the set, set we're going to use today. We're going to use two, actually two sets. And I have them upside down, but I turned the camera around. So now I can stamp like normal with you guys. So, um, uh, so I love this North Pole mischief. I love cats, obviously. So that makes me want to use this all the time. And I actually had a Siamese cat before, and this reminds me a little bit of a Siamese cat. You could technically make it any kind of cat you wanted. Um, I'm sure there are people out there showing you how to make some versatile images of this cat. I'm gonna focus on it being kind of Siamese-ish just because of, it already lends itself to that. Um, yeah, so, and I'm mixing it with the Party Puffins Sentiments because the Party Puffin Sentiments has perfect, um, the perfect uh, little s phrase to go into the box here. You see before it says to the North Pole, but I thought, I love a good Christmas set, but can we find one that's versatile? And I love that the animals are so cute. You technically could do a goldfish, and if you were to mask off, and they have the new masking uh, tape, I believe, to help you with that, if you mask off this little, um, uh, if you mask off the little, what's it called? Uh, um, not Holly. Mistletoe. If you mask off the mistletoe, this is a super cute stamp as well. And so it's just trying to, I like, if I'm going to buy a set, I want to make sure I can use it for more than just one thing. Even, even if I love Christmas, I still want to use it for more than one thing. And this is a perfect birthday image. And this could be a fun little silly you know, like this one, you've been mostly good this year. You've been good this year mostly. And this could even be a birthday card too because, um, uh, you know, I think that that sentiment with the cat here would be fun too. That's a good idea later. So, all right, so moving on. I cut our little pieces. So this is our card that we're making today, super cute. And I put the sentiment down there. I thought it was kind of interesting to try that. So the, uh, what I used is the standard um, card base. This is Melon Mambo. And so again, this is four and a quarter by 11. And then I have, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot our Party Puffins, um, uh, the uh, candles. Let me get a block for the candles. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> I have a little, it's funny because I had a little guide that I'd used for my, uh, my, my, how I did it, but um, I moved it or put it away somewhere. Unless it's right here. I was trying to see. Oh, there it is. Here's the guide. I knew I had set it where I wouldn't lose it because I wanted to make sure. Oh, I had one already cut. So I, I wanted to make sure I had the coloring, you know, set. And then I also had played with on the white. On uh, Whoops. I played with on the white how I... Um, stamped because it's a little tricky how I got the stamp to go. So, and then we have the soft sea foam. Yes, a funny birthday card, right, Marsha? Um, and so I'll get some more Disney cards for you guys later, but this one I just thought, well, this one's already made and I'd rather get on and start stamping for you guys finally now that I'm recovering, like where I can sit long enough. Um, so we're, we're using soft sea foam and then we're using um, this is four inches by five and a quarter, and this is actually three inches by four and a quarter. So you see it's actually the same width as a card. So this is three inches by four and a quarter, and this is two and three quarters. This white piece is two and three quarters by four, um, and it fin fits our image just right, okay? You could make it a little smaller, but I stuck with this one. So I want to do, you know what, I want to do the um, image first. We'll do our, because um, the, the part with the candles is a little tricky. So let me get my little, yeah, 
let me make sure the ears, there was something about the ear that was bothering me. Whoops, my Kleenex just took off. Okay, yeah, there was like a hair on it. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go ahead and press it down and pull it up. Okay, good. The ear is not super pressed down. Let me try it with my, oh, there's my little, let me try it with my pad underneath. Sometimes when you have a large surface area, it's good to have a little padding underneath. You don't usually need it for um, uh, for the rubber stamps, but sometimes I will use it. And it just helps spread over a larger surface area. Whenever you have a stamp that has a, a big wide area, no, it's the same, so. It's fine, which one do I like better? I think I like the second one better. Um, all right, so, oh, but then I got something else on it. So we use this side. Okay, okay so we're just gonna color our, um, we're gonna color our uh, image and I'm using my little guide so I usually practice what I want to do on another um, I practice what I want to do on another piece and then I leave this inside my stamp case so that I can remember what colors I use because some sometimes I'll give away all my stamps and or, I mean all my cards and I don't have a reference anymore of what I used or how I did it and so that's what I usually do so first we'll do the bronze because that's the easiest one I'm using the short fine tip and I'm just going to color the tail here just a little bit I'm using bronze for it and just a touch on the ears and I actually need my color lifter because I got so excited I just went out of the line It doesn't totally pick up everything, but I mean, it's pretty good. All this is is a pure alcohol pen. And what it does is it erases, uh, it sort of erases the, um, the color. And with the ear down, coming down, I, um, uh, I wanted to make sure I had some diff like texture because it's coloring the edge, but not a hundred. So, okay, so we're done with that. And then we'll color our little dog. And I'm using the light gray granite for his main body. Oh, this is dark. Oops, grab the wrong one. Well, that'll just show a little texture. So we'll do some light gray granite the body. I had him white, but he just looks too plain in white. I just felt like he needed color. And I didn't want him to be brown like the... You could even put some spots on him. Well, we, I guess he has a, a spot. You could add more. But I don't know. He just seemed like he needed more color than just being a white dog. And so I went ahead and decided to color him gray. He's a cute little dog. You're right, it could be a, a Siamese cat from the Lady and the Tramp, you're right. So it is a Disney card. Although they were super skinny, but they were so funny. They were my favorite characters in that movie. I, I feel like it. <laughs> That, the Scotty dog also made me laugh pretty hard. Okay, and I think I got the tail. Yeah, dang it, I'm anxious, so I'm coloring outside the line. So glad you guys could come on, the, on and watch. I remember when you comment and share, then um, I send one of my, now here's the dark gray granite. 
and I'm putting that on the ear here, a touch here at his mouth, and I'm putting a little bit his uh, smile, and I put some here on his legs, a little on these little scruffs, just adds a little bit of texture, a little bit on his arms, under his belly here, so a little dark shader. And I actually put a couple on these little swishes on the back, um, just to give a little extra texture to him. And so we're done with the gray granite, done with the bronze. Then we'll take our, I did not have Bermuda Bay, oh, no, this is Bermuda Bay. Oh, this is Coastal Cabana. This ink here, this paper here is Coastal Cabana. Um, soft sea foam and look at how cute those colors go together and um, melon mambo I got that from a color card which oh I need the gray I need the dark gray granite and I put the dark gray granite in the loops of the ribbon and right here Anywhere it was gonna have like a little bit of a shadow, I used the dark gray granite there. And then I took my Bermuda Bay. This is a light Bermuda Bay because it's actually almost like a Coastal Cabana. And Coastal Cabana and, and Bermuda Bay are like cousins. And so they're the same family. And so that dark gray granite, if you look closely, adding that little bit of gray granite and let me let it uh, let me let it focus why is it not focusing oh the camera's over here you see there's a tiny bit of um there's a tiny bit of uh uh what's the word shading in the loops and so that will help make your just gives a little texture to that bow. It took me a long time to figure out how I was gonna color this. And I'm using the fine tip to try and avoid going outside the line. Uh, you could also have used the Stampin' Right markers, um, but they will leave some stripes, you know, when you're coloring. So you, the blends, Eliminate that and then you can also add that extra texture and So super fun Okay, there we go Okay, we got my nice little ribbon I made 20 of these for a card swap, they call them. So, you know, sometimes we can't buy everything in the catalog, obviously. So, um, if you do a swap, someone can make something with the stamps that you didn't buy, but you can still show people so that they can see, because sometimes what they have in the catalog is not enough. Um, like I, I like how they did the catalog with this, but they did it with just traditional red and green, which is fine. But I also think that this could easily be, you know, if you, oh, this is the wrong purple, but that's okay. I thought I had used, no, this is the right purple. It just looks darker when I've colored. And then I'm using a light melon mambo for my gift because the dark melon mambo is this red it looks almost red when you color with it so it's like too much and you don't have to press down hard with the markers i think people forget that even when i used to teach children you know you really don't have to press down hard with the markers so you can keep that fine point um Sometimes I, I go, I'm a, I, I write with a really heavy hand. And so I have to remind myself when I'm using markers, I really press down. You can like feel the impression of the writing when I write, especially in pen. 
I really press down hard when I write in pen. I don't know why. It's a habit I learned, obviously. And so um, pencil makes it a little bit better for me to not write so hard. But even then, I write pretty hard. I'll break the, ed the edge of the lead on the mechanical pencils, which is why I use mechanical pencils instead of regular pencils. So, all right, almost done. Okay, done. So we've got our cute little coloring. And I only added a little rhinestone to this boy because he needed a little something, but I didn't know what. Um, I was trying to go through and find something else to put for his um, collar. But, you know, sometimes the old classics are just the best ones to use. Oh, I guess I put them away. I thought I had all my rhinestones here. I pulled them out of my little lunchbox so that I they were handy. Well, maybe we'll go with this one if I can't find my other rhinestones. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just use one of these. It needs to be the small one, you know? It needs to be like a real tiny one. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see the line though through that one. I really want a silver one, but... Oh well, we'll make do with that one. I saw I had them here. Oh, there they are. Is that them? Yeah, there they are. I had moved them over. Let me take this off. You can see the little, um, you can see the, the, the silver ones. You can't see the, um, the stamp. There's this the tape. All right. And you know, a classic rhinestone is sometimes just, just what you need. You don't have to try and make it different. And you know, you, if you really wanted, you could technically color that rhinestone and with the blends and make it a different color. But how cute is that? So that's a cute little, um, our cute little image. And so, and you see the rhinestone shines just right. And so that's good. All right, so we're done with our image. We'll set that aside. So I had to practice how I wanted to stamp the soft suede not soft suede, soft seafoam, because when you go down with your candles, I didn't want to have it come off the edge of the paper. I wanted to have it where the candles didn't come off the edge because I didn't want half candles at the top too. And so it was a little tricky. I'm not gonna pretend it was a little tricky and probably more high maintenance than anyone else would do but I went ahead and I figured out a way to make it work okay so I went ahead and I put my first candle here and put my second candle fit it right in between and then my third one I put left some space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in that space with a candle after I've cleaned this off. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. I went almost to the top, but I didn't run off. And the same thing down here. Because otherwise what happens is the candles will run off and you can't get it, um, you can't get it, um, you just can't get the right, uh, it just looks a little funny. I mean, it looks like you cut the paper, but because I'm doing it just on the edges, I didn't want that, um, that image off to the side. So, all right, so, the cool thing about this, now some people have actually cut these candles out. I've seen some people cut them actually into individual candles and that way they can make them in a straight line. Um, I didn't do that, but, cause I don't know if I'll keep this stamp set forever, but 
So then I just inked up one candle and put it, oh, see, I, I got just a touch of it on the second candle. But if you do it right, you won't have anything. I could mask this also, but um, I can mask it. But I went ahead and I just put it, I don't even need another one there, I don't think, once I put my piece on. No, and I just need one right there. And then I'm going to ink up this right side. And I'm putting it right here. Okay, so I still get my full inked candles, but um, I didn't have to run out of space on the stamp pad. All right, now the coloring. So all of the flames, I'm using, I don't have a blend of Daffodil Delight, um, but it's such a small image. I'm just gonna use my handy dandy Stampin' Write markers. Just a Daffodil Delight. The coloring is, takes a little bit of time. I don't know how many Christmas cards I could do of this because of all the coloring. But, or birthday cards. Well, I made 20, so it just took me a while, but it was good because I was recovering. So I just would take it to, and I color just a few things at a time. I'd come and sit down and I'd color, and then I'd go back and I'd color, and then I'd go back. So, all right, so it, I just tried to make it as random as possible. So I put Bermuda Bay here, and I put on the right side, I put Bermuda Bay here. And on this one, I went ahead and put it on the left side. So these ones I'll do as Mel and Mambo because I put Bermuda Bay there. I think I'll do this the one. You might not even see this one. It might be underneath, but, um, and I think I'll put Bermuda Bay on this one. I just tried to randomize it a little bit. And then, so like this is the left. I, it's, it's not a total science, but and I tried to make it a little different on the right side. And so there's gonna be Melon Mambo at the top. So this one I'll make a Bermuda Bay. This is the light Bermuda Bay so that it looks a little bit more. And I think I'll make this candle Bermuda Bay here too. You might not even see that one. And then the rest, I'm just gonna color with the mel light melon mambo. It's a little bit brighter. I love combining these two stamp sets. Oh, I forgot to color that flame. Uh, you might not even see that one, but. So we are done with, oh, I, there's a pink one, I forgot. And you should always store your blends and markers on their side because they're double-ended. If you, if you store them upright, the ink will just go down to the bottom. But if you store them on the side, it keeps the ink even between both tips of the marker. Okay, so we're done with that. So we can adhere this. And you see, I just practiced how I wanted to get the um, how I wanted to get the candles. I practiced it on the side here to see how I could do it. I thought I'd have some paw prints, but they got too, they were too hidden. So I didn't use the paw prints on that, but this was just my practice sheet and I'm going to save it just in case. Um, cause you know, if I make another one, I might forget the pattern of how I did it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. And the only thing about the blends is you wanna make sure that it's not a, um, you, it's not gonna be directly in the card. You wanna make sure it's covered up because it does seep through. And so, here's my colored one, there we go. 
And so here's my, and you see it did seep through quite a bit, so you don't want it, you want to make sure that's all covered up. Oh, my host code. I forgot to get my host code. I need to share that. I need to get back in the routine of all the things that I do. All right, and then we need to stamp our birthday. We can go ahead and put this on dimensionals and pop it on the front. Then we need to do the birthday inside. I use a lot of dimensionals. You can also use the dimensional uh, the strips. Uh, I just am using these. I don't have a lot of the strips because I don't use them that often. Um, so I just went ahead and put a bunch across so that I had all that I needed. Excuse me. I wonder what I'm going to eat for dinner. It's kind of late. I should have already eaten dinner. Just kind of, I, I was so tired when I came from the doctor today. When I came home, I actually fell asleep. Okay, I'm so excited I can drive. It's pretty cool. All right, so you don't see all the candles, but you can see the edges. And so there we go. Cute. Cute, 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 cute. Put a little bit more color lifter there. Okay, so that is our front of our card. Now for the inside, where's my, I should have a little white cardstock piece. Oh, perfect. I thought I had taken all my white cardstock into, oh, there's one right there. So, so then I decided to do a little paw print. I would actually, I'm going to do one also on an envelope. Let me grab an envelope. Um, I put a little paw print in the corner. Let me grab a white envelope so that I have... I always like to have I could even have done the candles in the corner but I'll do paw prints this time all right and then we do our Highland Heather for the um, happy birthday and I actually thought it was kind of fun instead of trying to get it centered in the middle I thought I try and get it aligned over here near the paw print and that was actually a fun um, change because you know we always want to put the sentiment in the middle but I didn't do that this time I thought no let me put it in the corner look how cute that is in the corner um, and then you have room to write but you it also allows you to get your little sentiment straight because sometimes it is hard to get it straight in the middle so that's where the stamparatus comes in and using the stamparatus to get your sentiment perfectly straight. Um, I actually also used the Stamparatus to make 20 of these. And that was a godsend because 20 of that cat image, making 20 of those, you know, because if there was a spot that wasn't fully inked, I could, I could press it down again, you know, and not have to move the paper. So the Stamparatus is a godsend. And when you're doing multiple images. Oh, I forgot the other part, that you're the best. Okay, so this tiny piece, I just measured, it's it's approximately like one inch by, I don't know, like three quarters of an inch or something. I don't know exactly what it is, but it was just the right size. And I just, it's not even a full three quarter inches because, um, It, I needed it just a little bit bigger. And you could actually even write, you know, two, you know, in the spot. But I went ahead and I wanted to stamp it because I needed it for um, the swap. And so I'll get all these cards. I'll show them to you guys when I get them. I think I want another dimensional. 
um, I wanted the swamp to have current, uh, and I, to, to hand write something on each one for 20 was a little too much. If I was doing just one, maybe. But there we go. So now we're gonna put this right over the label. You're the best. And it still has the cuteness of the, the cat and dog, but it just has a little different, um, I wanna have my little envelope. Just has a little different um, feel to it. And you could do it beyond Christmas. And see, this is the other one I was gonna do. This is using the whimsy die cutting. Um, and I, I thought this one might be fun, but I changed my mind because I really wanted to have this the birthday aspect more prominent, but this will be perfect for a um, Christmas card. So I'll, I'll probably make one of those later. And so I use the North Pole Mischief. I think this is only like $18. And then the Party Puffins, which I believe is also $18. But I Party Puffins is one of the cutest birthday sets. I just think it's really fun and whimsical. I know people like to say things like, oh, it's childish. I don't think that whimsical always means childish. I think whimsy can just be fun. You know, not everything has to be serious. And so having a little bit of whimsy to me is, is a fun, this is a fun card for a boy or girl or even an adult, you know, cause it's the irony of the dog pulling it, you know, wrapping up the cat, you know, it's funny, you know, so yeah. So there you go. There's our cute little card. That's it. So fun, fun. Well, thanks so much for tuning in guys. I'm so glad I was able to get on here and do this with you. And thanks for your patience and me trying to get it all set up. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.